What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Andy the Middle Age Gamer and this is the ultimate comparison video of the MWS GBBR clones for 2024. Now, as always, let's stick the usual disclosures on screen now and with that, let's jump in. Okay, so let's start with the Noveski N4 MWS from Double Eagle. This is officially licensed through EMG. And to be honest, this is important. I do think that everyone should bear this in mind. Another reason why I included this is you can get this with the CGS um, internals from SEMA, as they do a version of this as well. But basically what you get out the box is Magpul stock, Magpul grip, which are absolutely awesome. They feel really good and solid. The QDs have that little metal insert in there, so they're going to really hold. It's just a lovely stock. Now, with the SEMA, you don't get this. So just want to point that out. Even though this is only £350, you get the Magpul furniture here without the trades. Yes, but they're still going to save you about £80 to £90 for buying both of these on their own and getting them on your rifle. So that's not bad coming out the box that way. Now, you do get all the correct deep engravings, which are awesome. The markings go all the way down to even on the barrel. You do get the nice... Um, I would say front and rear cheap flip up sights. At least you get them because most guns today they don't come that way. And yeah, you do get the nice silver bolt carrier. Now, of course, you see here a little gap. Now, all MWSs have that as I smack my camera there, but just FYI. Now, the one thing I did notice is out the box this was worn, but the camera does a very good job of trying to actually brighten it. But if I can get it in the right light you can see it's pretty faint and worn but you know that's a minor gripe for what you get out of the box you do get the Noveski super badass charging handle which is absolutely awesome and yeah just overall a absolutely outstanding piece of kit now the magazine that comes with it is a 30 round magazine it is perfectly fine it does come with the 556 markings on the top even though it's six millimeter BB. When you get the nice fill part up at the top, so it's hidden out the way and you don't accidentally bang it when you drop it on its backside. But other than that, this is a really good magazine and generally does a good job. Okay, moving on, we've got the guns modified. This is the HK416A5, brand new for 2024. And this retails for around the 600 to 630 pounds mark. Now, again, you do get a really good build quality. And that basically means you've got all the correct trades. You've got a really decent stock. In fact, the stock and the grip on this are actually better than the officially licensed VFC one, in my opinion. Having owned quite a lot of the VFC over the years, and certainly I've had like five of the Gen 2s, if I remember rightly. Um, but yeah, this is just absolutely amazing quality. And we'll get into the internals, obviously, for all of these when we do the takedown. But yeah, it's absolutely amazing piece of kit. Now, this, just like the other ones, features a CNC finished upper and lower receiver and a full CNC handguard, which is absolutely awesome quality out the box. But like I say, you get all the correct trades on this, unlike the VFC officially licensed one. And all that just to sacrifice for the realism for the internals. But we'll get to that. Now, of course, this itself is just absolutely beautiful. Now, this does come with what we would call a Cerakote type of finish. I'm not sure if it is Cerakote itself, but whatever it is, it's bloody durable. And it's taken a good lot of impact and wear. Now, of course, markings don't just go back to there, but do go to the bolt as well. As you can see, you still have that little gap. Now, you do get your polymer dust cover like the real one. You do get all the proper bits there. Front and rear flip up sights. The front one is just there, hidden in. And yeah, just absolute gorgeous. Now, the magazine, as you can see, does come with all the correct trade markings for what it is. And it has a nice little party trick, as we've shown before, but we'll do it again because it's still fun. Just pull the base to there, push that up, and as you can see, we get a lovely little temperature, which tells you in this place I'm at 23. So you can always tell the temperature of your mags, allowing you to, how to say, 
use these in the correct order, get more out of it, etc. You do get your fill there at the back, which is great, just like the Double Eagle. And these are really, really good magazines, certainly on the pokey side. Okay, and representing the SEMA gas system, or CGS, is the Daniel Defense M4 PDW. And yeah, this is basically using T8 internals, etc., which the CGS system is basically just T8, let's call it for what it is. Now, again, this retails for roughly the same price as the Guns Modifier, about the £600 mark. You might find this one a little bit cheaper here in the UK. Generally, it depends on sales, and you're only talking like 20 or 30 quid at best. But it's still a big saving. That's a couple of bottles of gas, as we say. Now, with that in mind, what do you get out of the box? Well, unlike the others that are pretty much clone accurate, this one isn't. Now, yes, you do get a nice grip, which if we bring it in, you will notice these are the SEMA logo, not the Daniel Defense logo in it, but it is the same grip. Now, the other part is the stock. This comes as a pistol with a, I would say, a brace on the back if you order it as a brace, but when you do it as an SBR, this should come with the collapsing, I would say, wire stock, which is awesome, but... Obviously, SEMA decided to not do that. Just like I mentioned when they did the um, Noveski M4, it comes with a standard SOP mod stock and an A2 grip when it should come with a Magpul furniture. We've all seen the Navy SEALs photos. We know what it's officially kitted out to be. Um, it's not like it's one unique soldier. It's like every soldier is using the Magpul MOE stock, etc. Um, but if you forget the stock, which is still good, because to be honest with you, I've enjoyed this little collapsing mini SOP mod stock. It's been quite good. The grip is still very comfortable. The markings are right, nice and bright, and just laser etched onto the top there. And you do have these nice ones here for Daniel Defense with the address. Now this is, again is a right hand friendly only gun out the box, but of course you can always find a, how would you say, another ambidextrous fire selector for the MWS platform and that should work. Just make sure it's T8 compatible. Now, your bolt releases there. Everything else is nice. You do get the wrist three handguard, which is short, and you do get the sound. How would you say? I call it an amplifier. They call it a sound compensator. But to be honest with you, it makes more louder pops than it than it does actually, you know, suppress it. Because the real one, it's supposed to angle the sound downrange, make it more hearing safe for you. But on airsoft, it makes it just more louder. Now I added this foregrip, and. As you can see, everything's nice. You do get the 300 blackout. Again, it looks more bright than what it is because in real life, that's pretty faded. And if I pull that back, you do get the DD logo etched onto the bolt. But generally, this is a nice piece of kit. The T8 magazine that's supplied is for the 300 blackout. It does come with the 300 blackout logos. You can get them with the 556 now for the uh, DDM4 if you wish. Now the base plate is how you would access here. So you'd push in and slide, and then you can access the fill valve right there. Just pop that in. This little insert kept popping out of mine, so a little bit of super glue would help that. Your fill valve, like I say, being there at the bottom means it's pretty plain up here. And these are just transfers. You can just see the um, like the moisture from the gas and everything as it goes in. It makes it look a little bit cheapy. When in reality, you know. That is a nice picture when you take it out of the smoky plastic. Again, it's very light. You can see the T8 gas seal there. There's been a T8 magazine. So yeah, absolutely awesome. Okay, so now that we've done the overview, let's take these outside and see what they chronograph at with their own magazines and do a bit of shooting. Okay, this is the Double Eagle Noveski N4 with its own mag. That gives us an average of 277.1 and 278 high, 275 low. It's okay, nice baseline. Okay, this is the guns modify using 0.25 gram BBs and its own mag. Okay. 
Okay, so that gives us a average of 308. Great. Um, 319.1 high, 301 low, which is not bad. Okay, this is the DDM4. I'm using 0.25 gram BBs, green gas, and its own magazine. Okay, so that's kind of cool. And with those FPS results in, let's try with the each other's mags. Let's alternate the mags and let's put all the, uh, I would say, figures there for you guys to see and show you them working with each other's mags just to prove a point. Okay, this is the Double Eagle with the Guns Modified mag running 0.25 gram BBs and green gas. That's a big difference. With that, we get a 324.8 FPS average, 329.1 high, 320 low. Very good. Okay, so this is the Double Eagle Noveski M4. Now with the T8 magazine from the CGS system. That gives us a 294.8 with a 303.5 high and a 290.8 low. That's not bad. This is the Guns Modify 416 with the Double Eagle Noveski mag. Okay, average of 273, 274.8 high, 269.3 low. Yeah, on the low side that one. This is the Guns Modify 416 with the T8 magazine and 0.25 gram BBs, as always. Okay. So an average of 282.8, 286.6 high, 280.8 low. Okay. Okay, this is the DDM4 PDW with the Double Eagle Mag and 25 gram BBs. Well, that's a miracle. Average of 300 with 303 high, 299.1 low. Hmm. And this is the DDM4 PDW, 0.25 gram BBs, and the Guns Modify mag. God, that's loud. So that's an average of 342.3. Yep, no, 345.2, 350 high, 342.3 is the low. Wow. Okay, so as you saw there with the intercompatibility of the magazines, it doesn't matter which mag of these magazines go in it, they are fully compatible. And yes, you can use the TM mags. 
Okay, just FYI. Now, one thing we did see was that the Double Eagle was consistently the lower power out of them. Now, that can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on where you are in the world. If you are running, for instance, the Noveski um, here in a cold climate, somewhere like Norway, then you're going to want to use something like the T8 mags or the Guns Modify, to, to be honest with you, with the Guns Modify being the highest FPS out of them all. That's something just to bear in mind. Now, of course, it's entirely up to you guys what mags you prefer. To be honest, I like them all. I think they're all pretty decent, you know? And like I say, I use the mags perfectly fine. I already know that these are going to be a little bit low powered. What I have noticed is I can usually step it up to New Pro 3.0 if it's getting cold and that'll keep a consistent FPS for me. But for the best part, I generally use green gas and it's perfectly fine. They're not going to cycle bad or have any issues. So that's kind of cool. But uh, just something to notify, they're all pretty much the same price point for the magazines. Now, let's talk about the receivers. Okay, so let's start with the Noveski, as this is what I would consider a true Marui clone. Why do I say that? Well, quite simply, you do have the Marui Z plate right there, and all the parts are pretty much a spitting image of the, how would say, Tokyo Marui. Now, in this case, though, all the internals of this is steel, meaning you already get out the box a absolute phenomenal, I would say, updated system. You're not going to have to go out there and buy a new fire control group or anything. You can pretty much keep this stock. It has a, go a gorgeous trigger. I mean, it really is. If I pull that, you've got literally, there's the wall, nice soft break. You're talking three, four millimeters there for a reset. It's right at the end. You got about a millimeter extra and then you're back onto it. But you're talking about two and a half to three pounds of pull. It's very light, it's very nice, and it works. It really does a fantastic job. Now, like I say, these are all steel. Steel trigger. Steel bolt release, steel fire selector, steel sears, steel pins, steel hammer, etc. Even the firing pin down there is steel. So that's absolutely awesome. Straight out the box to get such quality, you can't basically complain for the price. Now, what that comes with at a cost is obviously the rate of fire is down, and that's because they copied the Marui buffer tube. Why? You now can see here you have a spacer. There is if I remember rightly, right there, a securing screw for that spacer in there. There's just so much. It's With it having multiple parts, what generally happens is if you put more heavier, how would you say, bolt carriers in there or you speed it up, short stroking that, the sheer force on this tube is just going to break that screw or strip it, meaning you'll have to completely take off this buffer tube and put a single stage on it. But as this is true to a Marui, that's what you would get in the Tokyo Marui. You pretty much... I would say are getting a one-to-one. -one. They did a good job at replicating that. And of course, you can interchange any of the parts in here right the way down to the polymer buffer here and spring, which is a very soft spring, just like the Marui. It's actually a lot softer than it needs to be. I think that's one of the things you could easily change to speed up the return rate as it goes back into battery. Or you could short stroke this one, whichever one's easiest for you to do and short stroking it will pick up the rate of fire a little bit, which is, it's entirely up to you what you want to do, but they're just little improvements. Do you need to? No, because on semi it's perfectly fine. Again, it's just up to you. Now, bringing in the guns modify, if we put these two side by side like this, you'll notice they share a lot in common. But if I just put that down here, you can see here that the Guns Modify looks very, very similar, but you do see the new, if I put that there, V4.0 in there, and that's because you do get the adjustable hammer, which is great for the hammer power. It still has the Z, but as you can see, the profile of the Z on here is more Marui traditional, whereas this one has been enhanced for a better lock back. And of course this has the ambidextrous bolt release slash hold open. 
Now, other than that, you do get the parts um, in a little bag inside the box if you want to change the trigger spring. But to be honest with you, again, the trigger on this is just as light, if not hair triggery, than, yeah, than going off the official Marui. So, yeah, it's just an absolute great trigger, very light. You're talking two and a half pounds to three pounds a pull, more than enough for what you need it to do. And yeah, again, this has steel pins, steel sears, steel hammer, steel bearings, steel bolt stop, steel bolt release, steel on the mag release, steel on the trigger, pins are steel. So yeah, pretty much everything in there is steel, Barring the case. The case itself that it's in is a zinc, I would say, case for the fire control group. You don't need it to be steel. It's the, impo the important parts are what's actually making contact with the parts here. So your sears, your hammers, etc. They do need to be steel. Now, one person did ask if the trigger on this is basically worse than the Marui or better. I think they're pretty much, they feel light but this one after the first i think the first 500 rounds on both of the noveski and this and even the daniel defense felt a little bit grindy and gritty and that was as you've got steel hammers you've got to self-polish them they will wear on each other and bed in once it beds in it's smooth as anything so it's about putting rounds down range rather than making drastic changes now one of the other changes they did with this is give you a whole single piece buffer tube. So there is no weak points. With this though, they did copy the HK over the beach holes there for the drainage of water, not that you're gonna be firing it through water, but it is what it is. And again, they did give you the polymer buffer. Now this buffer looks very similar to the other one, but the nylon fiber they used to make it is designed for a higher impact. Without having to go onto metal, they wanted to do it properly. So kudos to them. And the spring is a lot more stiffer, giving you a faster return rate. Again, like I say, just one of the changes you can make to the Noveski for cheap. So that's really good. Now, if I put this one down as well, and let's pull in what I call the elephant in the room. First of all, you will notice the buffer tubes are not the correct length. This being a PDW comes with the PDW length. So yes, you can fit any M4 stock on there, but remember you will lose positions, as you would say. And it, yeah, you just don't get the full length. So they've done that and with this, they've short struck it. Straight away, you can see that the buffer is aluminium and is more of a mil spec size in the dimensions inside. So you cannot use those buffers inside here because they, those are slightly smaller and therefore will rattle around and cause wear that you don't need. Now you do get a nice spring and it's a very short buffer there because of the short length in the buffer tube. Now, this being a T8, as you can see written on the bolt, if I can get that right for you, you should see T8 there etched in. Again, it does look like a Marui, but it's missing something. If I pull that up, this one has the Z plate to catch. This one does not. It catches directly, more traditionally, on the bolt stop right here, which you can see is taking some nice wearing finish off, but other than that, it's fine. This also gives you an adjustable hammer via a screw here, rather than directly on the hammer, and you can adjust the break and distance of throw if you drop that there. There is a small little Allen key right there, you can see it. That is thread locked really badly in there. So if you want to undo it, you're gonna to have to overcome the thread lock. And there is obviously one there in the trigger. You can adjust them if you wish, but like everyone says, leave them alone. Only adjust the hammer in the cold weather when you're starting to have cycling issues. Add a little bit more, uh, less hammer or add more in the, water in the summer to add a bit more resistance, slow it down a bit. One of the things I did notice with this, with the DDM4 being 1,200 rounds a minute, because of that ridiculous rate of fire, well, you do get some feeding issues, you will get crushed BBs, double feeds, etc. Just FYI. Now, 
that we've looked at, at these, let's have a look at the insides. So here we have the Noveski bolt carrier. It's pretty much a spitting image of the Tokyo Marui. You have a small little locking plate there. Once you take this off to remove, undo the nozzle, and once this is off, you can slide that out. Now, if I pull the nozzle forward a bit, you will see you do get your spring-loaded locking lugs. What are these there for? Most people get angry and remove them when they should leave them on. Okay, what this is there for is so that when this whole thing goes back into battery, you can see there, it cushions the impact instead of breaking it and also limits the amount of penetration that this actually has. Okay, if it over penetrates, you end up ripping your booking apart and damaging that. And if it under penetrates, you will lose seal. So this is what that's there for and to kind of serve a dual purpose. Now, you can, for instance, take this out of this one and put it in to say the guns modify or any of the others. The nozzles are fully compatible between them all. Now with guns modify though, you can see a difference straight away. The locking lugs are here, but they're not the part of the unit and they do not telescope in or out, they are locked. Now this is also designed at the right length, basically, and it does the exact same job, but doesn't have that buffer. What it does have is an extra roller on the top. So you get two rollers making this actual bolt carrier group run better. This is their enhanced V3.5, I believe it is, because this nozzle is a version 3.5. Yes, it is. It's a version 3.5, it should tell you. Upside down, but it's there on the sides. You can see it, version 3.5 nozzle, high flow nozzle. And you get this, they are filthy because I have been using them. But other than that, they're really good. Now what these have in common is they use a steel in plate, or insert plate right there. This one being for the double eagle and this one being for the guns modify. That's where the actual Z plate will engage and lock onto these and hold these back. They're really good, but you've gone from good, very good, and now you get to the SEMA. Now what SEMA have done, instead of making it out of zinc and aluminium like the others, they made this out of steel with an aluminium tail. Now, if that's a good thing or a bad thing, that's gonna be up to you. But for me, I, I like the steel, but I have noticed one of the issues. Whereas the other ones, like say, have that steel insert, which is interchangeable, this is not. And as I can get it here, I don't know if I can get my camera to focus. Ooh, there we go. You can see here the indentation there where it would lock. Now what that's doing is flattening it out. And I've found that when I've tried running this in any of the others, you do get bolt lock issues where the Z plate tries to hook onto it. But because of that flat, it's a bit too much material and it's ended up having to either break it or damage it even more. So I'd say leave this in the T8. If you're gonna run this, run this in its T8, design it with the system and that'd be fine. As you can see, other than that, it's pretty much the same. Again, though, with the nozzle on this, this has a softer return spring compared to the others, and it does have the moving. But as you can see, even though it's springed, if we get that here, even though it has a spring on it, because of the material and the quality of it, you can see that it jams. So you're relying on this, how would say, bolt carrier going back in the receiver. The receiver then pushes that forward like that. You can see that happen, that engages, that pushes that forward for the return. But if you're using the this on full auto, that 1,200 rounds a minute, it kind of messes up and that causes either, like I say, sometimes I get feeding issues, but also I get low FPS where it'll just drop out the end because it's just going so fast it can't seal properly with that being fully out or being locked in and it overgoes. It, it's crazy and you'll end up, like I say, over time doing damage. But you do get your roller, everything else is pretty much the exact same design as a Marui, but this one being made of steel. So, as I say, you do get your charging handles, you get your Noveski one there. Okay, you've got your Daniel Defense. Now these are all interchangeable between each, one of the few parts that are interchangeable between them all. So that's kind of cool. Now, let's talk about the uppers. Okay, so here we have the uppers. Now, like I said, all of these feature CNC finished uppers and lowers. 
in the main receivers with full CNC handguards. So just FYI with that. Now, with the up eight comes your hop adjustment unit on these. Now, of course, this being a, let's say, true Marui clone, you really do get a spitting image and fully interchangeable adjustable hop unit with a little wheel there, kind of like the high cappers. Just adjust the wheel and you'll adjust the hop. What that does is impart a small little arm up and down in there. This one being a clone is made with the same as the Tokyo Marui, which is a plastic arm. And over time that might break, but you can easily find a Marui hop adjustment arm and replace it quite simple. To remove the inner barrel and booking, you would need to undo the six screws on the handguard, slide that off, undo the barrel nut, and just pull out the out barrel and you can just literally then pull out the inner barrel booking and hot bit inside. Quite simple, it's very easy to do and doesn't take more than five minutes and you can easily swap that out, that's not a problem. And this is fully compatible with any Marui GBBR inner barrels and bookings and there's very many of those on the market. So that's your Noveski. Now, you'll notice similarities with the Guns Modify here. With the Guns Modify, it's pretty much identical, except they did put the nice telling you which way the hop is adjusted. But with this using their enhanced hop unit, you basically get metal parts inside and a metal arm, which means you're gonna last you a lot longer in between swapping out failures and so on, which parts do, they're all designed to fail a certain way. Um, but yeah, really easy. Again, to undo it, you just undo this bolt, this comes off, slide the handguard off, and then you'll be able to undo the barrel nut and access it that way. Now, SEMA being SEMA and T8 being T8 felt that that was not right and they had to change it. And so therefore making it not compatible with Marui, SEMA and T8 did their own QD hop system there. You can see the grub screw, if I get my little pointer there. The grub screw right there, undo that, and this whole unit just drops out, and then you can pull the inner barrel and booking straight out. That screw there is your adjustment screw. It is slightly ratcheted on this version. I've seen some without it, some with. Again, that's quality assurance, as I can tell you with this. I don't know if we can get this on camera, but there are scratches around the crown and dints when they installed this and manufactured it. Their quality is not quite as good as guns modify in that respect and we'll get into that now again nice idea whether you like it coming out the inside or you do out the front it's going to take you roughly the same amount of time anyway and putting this back in and getting it to set and lock with some thread lock is going to be a pain but that's how you would do it on this again like i say just an fyi there so how about we do this let's get these all put back together and let's discuss so while i do that you guys can see them shooting again. Okay, if you've gotten this far in the video and you like what you see but you're not subscribed, then hit that subscribe button. While you're there, hit that notification bell and like button. That way you stay notified whenever I upload a new video and you really help out with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to go one step further, you can always use the YouTube thanks and that really does go a long way and a huge thank you for donating to the channel that way. Now, with all things said and done, huge thank you anyway regardless of what you do. You guys are amazing and it's because of you that I'm able to do this. So, let's get into final thoughts. So, if I was to look at this at a more realistic, the Noveski coming in at 350 pounds really is the ideal entry level GBBR. If you're looking for the MWS family, which has over a decade of aftermarket support, there's hundreds of companies doing it, loads of parts, they're pretty much everywhere. You can always find something that you need and you can pretty much build it into whatever you want it to be. So spending 350 pounds is a really good entry level, especially if you come from AEGs and you're not sure whether GBBRs are your thing, whether you're gonna like it because you've gone from a 220 round mag, 
with no reloading in between games to a 30 round mag where you suddenly get the uh, uh oh moment and having to do reload. So some people might think they like it, try it and not. So that's why I say 350 pounds, you're getting an absolute amazing build out the box. It's ready to go and it's ready to go with you and become what you want it to be. So absolutely astounding. But that then leaves us with these two here at the bottom, the Guns Modify 416 and the SEMA gas system overall, whichever version you go for. Now, the TA system is proprietary, and I will state that off the bat. You can put it in a Tokyo Marui, but you will pretty much need to transplant the fire control group, the buffer tube, the buffer, and all that to keep everything working, and the bolt carrier. You can't just really do one and not the other. Thanks to its more traditional way of locking up with the bolt to hold it to the rear, etc. It's just, yeah, if you're going to do that, transplant the whole lot. And then you just buy an T8. So I call that more of a proprietary. It's hot unit, well unique and certainly cool idea. It does have its own limitations. Like I say, wear and tear on the upper aluminum receiver. I've seen them start to strip the grub screw threads, etc. So better to just take the handguard off and do it that way, more traditional anyway. But that's just my opinion there. With the guns modify, you getting pretty much everything fully upgraded, just like the T8. Both of these are as though you've already upgraded them anyway. The only thing you're not getting is a type or in a barrel and a really high end booking, but you are getting the FPS out the box. It hits over 400 FPS without having an MPAS. I did put an MPAS, a RATEC MPAS in mine. I am waiting for another one to arrive, which is supposed to be even better, more consistent. Um, so here we up with that, bada bing, please. And with that being said, you know, it's like just amazing. I've got this now tuned up, running. It's accurate as hell as we've seen. It's really accurate out of the box with what you get stuck. And everything is already beefed up to the nines. It's already enhanced. It's already ready to go. And you do have that adjustability going forward. So for the price point, it's amazing. And remember, a true Tokyo Marui is going to set you back around the £600 mark anyway. Probably more 640 if you want the Mark 18. Um, 600 for something like the MTR or that. Even the URGI is 630 And with Guns Modified, they do sell the URGI. They do sell the Mark 18. And they're all the same price around the £600 mark. I think I've seen the, the cheapest is the Mark 18 and the URGI at Fire Support for 585 so, again, these are all cool options for you, but to be honest, the Guns Modify really have nailed it. They are pretty much like what VSC did. The Gen 1s were kind of touchy-touchy and would break. The Gen 2s fixed all that, and then the Gen 3s came along and enhanced on the Gen 2. Are the problems? Are the little things? Probably. But are they easily worked around now? Yes, it's certainly a way better place. And to be honest, I do prefer the Guns Modify overall finish, quality, and feel of it. It's just amazing. And that's where I'm led with it. Now, of course, all of these are interchangeable with magazines. You can choose which one suits you, which one you like. Again, your FPS-wise, if you're into that. Just remember with the Noveski there from Double Eagle, if you do use the more pokier mags and you put a tight bore in there, which will increase the fps for sure, or you swap out the nozzle to a TM nozzle or a Guns Modify, you are going to get the FPS boost anyway. So i do that first on its original mag before you swap. If you're going to do it like that, do that one first before choosing your mags. But generally, that's, like I say, what I would be doing. And to be honest with you, the Guns Modify just really rocks. So yes, if you are looking for a MWS that's better than Tokyo Marui, then you've got Guns Modify. They are the ones to go for right now in 2024. T8 comes a close second. And obviously, in this case, you would say a third place. But I do think it's the best of the entry level. So it's first in what its category is um, with the Noveski from Double Eagle. So hopefully you've liked this video. I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. I will stick around for a few days. I generally do. So you can easily have a look and at this video and let me know and I will try to answer everything I can. 
Okay, so if you've got any questions, that's where you leave them. And if there's anything else you'd like to see on this channel, again, the comments are there for that reason. I've been the Middle-Aged Gamer. You guys have been awesome. I'm going to go shoot these now. See you later.